Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Yogi Vlogs. Come on. Now, uh, so in case you have not caught up with the last episode, please go watch that uh, before you continue with this. In the last uh, couple of episodes, we spoke about the basic requirements of life and how we measure our life. So there are two factors here. One is relaxation, the other is fun. So we measure our life on how relaxed it is and how fun it is. How relaxed it is to live and how fun it is to live. Now, uh, if uh, there is a small homework which I gave uh, everybody watching this video. That is to you know uh, measure your life out and see how uh, you are able to uh, understand this relaxation and fun with respect to all the choices that you have made in life. So this is something which I have also gone through and it is a very revealing process and it helps you to understand how you make decisions. I have deeply understood and I am still understanding how, uh, what are the factors which I think uh, are going to cause me tension and what are the factors that I think are going to cause, uh, bring relaxation into my life and my decisions are based on that. Okay, so please go watch that and implement it, and then uh, you know give this video a shot because that'll uh, it'll help you better. Now this video's topic is yoga. Now why yoga? What is the word yoga mean, and where did that word come from? If you notice, we're not talking about any of these things, right? So the moment you think of the word yoga, you think about uh, you know asana, surya namaskara, pranayama, meditation, and all of these things. Now, all, is that all yoga or is yoga something else? What exactly is it? What exactly is happening here? And who are these yogis? So, all that is going to be revealed to you in this video. Great. So, first, the word yoga itself. Now, the, if you go look it up, uh, it will say that the meaning of yoga is to achieve union. It is based out of the word yuj and uh, it is to achieve union with God. However, the word yoga is used in India on a daily basis in a very, very different way. In fact, yoga is not actually, it is used in some, in some ways, but the opposite of the word yoga is used, <laughs> opposite of the word yogi is used very frequently in most of the Indian languages. Okay, so somebody who has this property is called a yogi and that is called yogya. Being yogya is the term, right? And what is the opposite of yogya? Somebody who is yogya, somebody who is ayogya, right? So ayogya is a word which we all understand very easily. What does ayogya mean? Ayogya means somebody who is useless, good for nothing, who cannot do anything right. There, that word should give you a big clue of uh, as to what the meaning of yoga actually is. Simply put, yoga is the exact opposite of the uh, description that I just gave you. Yoga or yogya, somebody who is yogya simply means that somebody, it, that person is somebody who is very useful, very skilled, very adept at solving problems, etc, etc, etc. Now, if you have noticed, we have, the, we use the word yoga for specific fields. We say, oh, you need to have yoga in this. That's how. That's how. Or that's why you. That's when you're going to solve problems. That's when you're going to be uh, good at it, right? So, uh, when somebody uh, is unable to uh, do do a particular task, you hear this statement uh, where you tell people that you know you don't have yoga in this man. You don't have yoga in this. You're not a yoga person. You're not worthy of this. You don't have the yoga for this result, etc., etc. Yeah, even in Hindi movies, they use this word. Yeah, uh, is iska iske yogi nahi hai tu, which means you are not worthy of this person. Where in the case where some some uh, Hindi movie story where a guy is being abusive to a girl and the elders say, why are you doing this? Blah blah blah. She's such a nice person, and she, they say you are not yoga of this person. Iske layak nahi, iske yogi nahi hai tu. Remember? There. Now, I hope you are able to understand and gain clarity on what the word yoga actually means. Now, does that mean that this is not, this uh, does not actually mean that uh, you are going to achieve union with God? No, it does not. It's, it's not actually that meaning. Achieving union with God or the universe is 
comes as a result of yoga. It's not the yoga itself. However, yoga is a very, very loose term. Very, very, uh, let's say, a floaty term. It doesn't actually mean anything unless you start pursuing it. A yogi is somebody who is simply very, very skilled, very, very useful, very amazing at problem solving and, you know, uh, very helpful. Generally, a very, very skilled person is called yogi. That's it. That's all it is. Right? So, it simply means, if you want to be a yogi, all you have to do is pursue skills, solve problems. That's it. That's all it is. Now, uh, then how did all of these techniques come about? How did the techniques of, you know, yoga sanas, how did techniques of pranayama, meditation, so many of these amazing secretive yoga techniques come out? Why did Patanjali, Maharishi Mahasiddha Patanjali write the yoga sutras? What's the point? What is he trying to explain there? What they are trying to do is trying to solve problems in your life. Right? So they know, they have been through hundreds and thousands of problems and they know categorically what are the kinds of pro problems that people have in their daily lives. What is the source of those problems? Right? And how do we solve them? They know this because they have worked with thousands and thousands of people and they have seen it. Doctors, for example, right? you know, after a few years of experience, you know when a person walks in, you know what the, what the issue is in their life. Right? And the whole point here is for a yogi is to solve problems. That's what they are doing. That's what is their aim. Everybody, even when Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, he is trying to solve a problem in Arjuna. Arjuna is like, bro, I have this problem, what do I do? And Krishna is teaching Arjuna on how to solve that problem. That is the whole point of the Bhagavad Gita. That is the whole point why Krishna gave the Gita Upadesha to Arjuna. And he knew Sanjaya was watching this. And he knew millions of people are going to read this. That's the whole point. There, they are trying to teach you how to solve our problems in our lives. That's the whole point. That's the whole aim of every uh, yogi out there. Their thinking, their chain of thought is, look, if everybody is like this and everybody becomes amazing, wouldn't this world become amazing? Wouldn't we like to live with amazingly healthy and like fantastically uh, beautiful people, like inside and outside? Right? Wouldn't that be a better world? So that's the aim here. That's the that's the whole point of this, and that's the whole point of this video, so that we can all, uh, you know, become healthy, become amazing, become like you know, utterly relaxed and have amazing lives. It'll be great for everybody. That's the whole point of this, right? So uh, yeah, so this has been a short video. I'll get into this further on in the next video that I'll record. The lights going. So and uh, I've got a few questions from you guys which is like, I'm very, very thankful for that and really grateful. So I've got questions on chakras and Sudarshana chakra and like, you know, what is prana and what is pranayama and all of these things. So these are quite advanced topics and we're going to get there. And uh, here I want, uh, I want to teach you how to feel prana, not just teach you the breathing exercises. Why is breathing called pranayama? What is the point of it? What are chakras? I'm not going to explain any of that. You're going to feel them. You're going to feel, you're going to explore. That is the whole point of this series. Okay, cool. So now, uh, if you have not watched any of the previous videos, please go through them. And from now on, it's going to get a lot of fun. We're, we're laying a nice foundation. And from now, we're going to start building on the foundation. So please understand, if you want to get on this path, please be very clear on this. And if you want to, you know, start on the path of yoga, I'm going to teach you from the next video, how do you start, where do you take the first step. I've already mentioned this, in fact, the, the first part is the detox, right. So I'm going to go, go into more detail in uh, the detox. Detox is not just making tea, man. Detox is removing toxins from your life, removing toxic stuff from your life, whether it is people, whether it is toxic thoughts, whether it is to toxic substances from your body, it includes everything. And this process is very, very important. Anything that is toxic is basically poison to us and it is causing us harm in ways that we have forgotten. 
and it's very important for us to get rid of these toxins just to become normal human beings so it's very important great and also it's going to be crazy fun and as we get healthier life is going to become more and more fun that's the whole point of this all right cool so let's end it here and uh, the next video will be out soon i know there's been a lot of delay so <laughs> yeah next video will be out soon chalo take care bye bye